For England to be the number one team in the world as we want to be, yeah, we need to be the most intelligent team in the world. We need to move the ball with intelligence. We need to defend with intelligence, which belies the fact that rugby is seen as a, as a brutally physical game. When you see players make better, better decisions, you know, it is a, is a great part of coaching. Yeah, we saw that with Johnny May on the weekend in the second test against Argentina. We got a turnover ball, went to the left, got to Johnny on the wing, and he put through a fantastic little left foot grubber. Now that left foot grubber went about 15 metres. He made the tackle. From that line out, we scored a mall try. And Johnny made a great decision there. You know, maybe 12 months ago, he wouldn't have made that decision. And he didn't have the skill also to execute that decision, but he was able to do that superbly. You know, the great thing about being an intelligent rugby team is that you can adapt. So the referee changes, the referee goes from refereeing the attacking side at the breakdown, the defensive side, intelligent sides pick that up quickly and change. The weather conditions change. For instance, again, the second test in Argentina was blustery uh, and very humid, which made the ball sweaty. So it was almost like playing in, in rainfall and therefore we didn't want to play a long phase game against them, we wanted to turn them around a little bit. So if you're watching that from the outside, you might have thought we, we kicked too much, but in fact we kicked very appropriately for the conditions of the game. Yeah, I always have said that once they get on the field, the players have to accept the responsibility and then take responsibility, and, and whilst at times we'll take responsibility for their performance, at the end of the day, the credit for those performances belongs entirely to the players.